I have to laugh. It says fragile handle with care and there's footprints on it. Meh. I guess fragile handle with care means walk all over it. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Now, if I sound a little different, it's because I got a bit of a cold. Um, fun fact, if you remember, I said Andrea was planning on doing something for my 50th birthday, and she did! <laughs> we went on a cruise. Well, she took me on a cruise. We went on a cruise. So, of course, on the way back, got a little bit of a cough. <sighs> Thought it was from snorkeling and breathing heavy because, you know, even though I'm in really, really good shape when I work hard, sometimes I breathe a little heavier. I know, I was shocked too. So um, yeah, got a little bit of the sniffles uh, on the Saturday coming home and uh, lo and behold, I got a cold. Now, I've tested for COVID, I tested negative four times, maybe five. Andrea, she's like, hmm, I got a little bit of a cough, maybe I should test. And what did she test? Positive. <laughs> she's not impressed. Although, when you ask us, would we go on a cruise again if it means getting COVID? Well, if this is the version of COVID we get, then yes, absolutely. Because turning 50 on a cruise was absolutely fantastic. I might even make a video and share it on here. Even though a lot of you guys probably think, Mike, I don't care. Mike, I don't care that we went on a sunny destination cruise while we stayed here and worked and did stuff. But man alive, I tell you, it was fun. So here I am, 50 year old Mike. <laughs> And you know what? The good thing about coming home with cold, I don't feel like eating. So I've actually lost my cruise weight. <laughs> I know I look thinner already too, don't I? My chin is slimming out, but uh, in all seriousness, I'm gonna try and uh, smarten up this winter because I don't wanna be a fat guy. I mean, not that I mind being a fat guy. It's just sometimes, you know, clothes get a little tight. Anyways, so we got Duke. <laughs> Duke drove, Duke's got a hood. I'm also gonna try and do more videos. We'll see what happens now that I'm home, do some more, maybe even do some new truck stuff, but I don't know, we'll see how it goes. And you guys from Faraway Lands, thank you for sending me plates. I got a couple new plates here and check this one out. It is from Queensland, the Sunshine Strait, Australia. Hi there, right? Um, I was just looking at the license plate frame. Grand Prix sales, Brisbane, 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 Brisbane. I'm probably butchering, Bris, Bris, Brisbane, Bris, Brisbane. It's from Australia. And that's my really poor Canadian accent of an Australian accent. So that came from, I'm sorry, I already forgot your name. And you know what, I did my homework. I looked at it first and I'm like, okay, I can remember his name. And it's like, you know what, Mike's a little foggy because you know, I'm kind of late getting out to the shop because because I'm sick. And you know what really sucks about being sick when Andrea is sick? I can't have a man cold because I tested negative for COVID. She tested positive. So it's like, I can't go, honey, could you get me a drink? Because technically she's kind of sicker than me. So on the, you know, on the flip side, it's like, anyways, you, you get what I'm meaning. So, um, but yes, all the way from Brian Woolley from Queensland, Australia. And uh, thank you very much, Brian. I love it. And we're gonna hang it on the wall. Oops. And I'm not gonna, uh, I'm gonna put your letter with it. So 20 years from now, I can look at it and say, ah, I remember back when Brian sent me his plate from Queenland or Queensland, Queensland, not Queenland, it's Queensland, Australia. One day, one day, Peter Boat Mike will go to Australia. When? Not sure. I know right now the bank accounts are low, the credit cards are high. Eh, what do you do? Gotta live life. Although, you know, high credit card debt is bad, but well, it never stopped me before. <laughs> I got trucks. You can't have one without the other. <laughs> Anyways, <coughs> excuse me. This video may not have a lot of physical activity because then it makes me want to cough. Um, 
What other plate did I get, do you ask? Where did it come from? Did it come from the Soviet? Did it come from Ukraine? Did it come from Uganda? Did it come from Africa? China? Turkey? Japan? Florida? Actually, I did get one in Florida, but that was a few years ago. No, it came from British Columbia. <laughs> I know, right? But you know what these plates are for? These aren't just any plates for the wall. These are for, they're for, they're for Duke. I put, I know, I got Duke registered and I insured him. So Duke can now be driven on the roads legally. <laughs> you know, not that I would ever drive him on the roads without full insurance because that would be wrong. So I, I, you know, I wouldn't do that <laughs> unless I had to, <laughs> but no, uh, Duke is insured. Um, so I'm going to take him to work. We're going to put some fresh fuel in him. But first, um, one, I got to get a bumper. So I got to get a bumper for him. And, uh, I mean, you could go for that Mad Max look. I mean, it does look kind of cool, doesn't it? So no, it doesn't, it really doesn't. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. But I'm gonna uh, go over all my, my lines, tie everything up, uh, make sure it's all ticky-boo, so to speak, so nothing's gonna rub, chafe, you know, just make it neat like, cause I, I, I was Russian, I was Russian. And you know, to my fault, when I re-watched my video and edited it, and I was like, in the video I say, Maybe I run out of fuel or I think I run out of fuel or I could run out of fuel because I knew I didn't have much fuel in it and I did. But when it died, the first thing I thought was the way it sounded. I thought, <gasps> my head gasket, the cylinder head, something's leaking, it's broken. But it wasn't, it was my stupidity. I put too much fuel into, <laughs> too much fuel. I Okay, I'll try this again, Mike. I put too much air into this tank and when it started, I didn't shut the air off. I didn't check the fuel. And basically because there was pressure in here and these trucks, someone asked me in the comments, they're like, why didn't you just draw fuel from the other side? Well, with the big trucks, they draw from both sides all the time and they're connected with the, the return lines and stuff like that. So when I had pressure in this tank, no pressure in the other tank, it pushed the fuel to the other side and it also pushed air into the fuel system. So <laughs> I not only did it once, but I did it twice. Because when I put fuel back in, I put air to it. And then because my fuel filters were empty, it took a while to get the fuel back in. And I should have pulled the fuel filters off, filled them with fuel. And it wouldn't have been a big deal, but it was late. I was scatterbrained. And that's kind of a lesson to us all. You know what? Don't rush it. If it has to wait another day, it has to wait another day. Um, because I created a bunch more stress that I didn't need to. But uh, eh, that's the way it goes when you're a rookie. I mean, let's face it, I am not a truck builder. Well, maybe, I, I, I guess maybe I am a truck builder now. <laughs> but I need to learn from my mistakes and slow down, take a breath, don't rush so much, and think about things clearly so you do it right, don't do any more harm uh, to things because you're rushing. So that's what I did, learned my lesson, just putting air to it, work. it works great. In fact, at work, if we need to pull a tank off a truck, you know, it's parked here, you just put a little bit of air to it, it pushes all the fuel to the other side, turn the tap off, take the line off, whatever, and then you can pull the tank off and do your work to it, and, um, and it's, uh, it works good. But, uh, but like anything else, with moderation, you know? It's kind of like having that second dessert on a cruise ship. With moderation. It's okay to have two desserts as long as you don't have three. <laughs> or you know, maybe have a half, half and a half, or just have a martini. <laughs> Martinis are yummy. But uh, anyways, guys, without further ado, I'm gonna get to it. Thanks for, uh, thanks for all your support. I can't believe how awesome you guys are. I really appreciate it. All the kind words with getting uh, Duke running. Now the key is, let's just hope he continues to run. Because <laughs> he starts, he runs. We've proven that he drives. Now we just need him to keep driving. Prove that it's a runner, that he's, you know, he's got, you know, another 7,500 hours, maybe 10,000 hours worth of life left in him. And, you know, in all reality, that's why I didn't replace all the pistons and liners with new is because when Glenn told me that this engine had been rebuilt um, when the hour meter was changed, so it's got 7,500 hours, so it's like, well, 
you know, 7,500 hours, it's still got lots of life left in it. So we're going to find out, you know what, heaven forbid something happens. Um, we'll deal with it. And that's why, you know what, we're going to put plates on, we're going to drive it. So anyways, quit talking, Mike, get to work. <sighs> Cause the more I talk, the less gets done. Although sometimes I hope that the more I talk, something would get done. Nobody's going to come do it for me, I guess. Although I'd be okay if somebody came and did it for me. Lord knows I can't pay anybody right now, but uh, one day. Okay, what am I doing? I got, I got, okay. I'm going to have to grease it. I'm going to have to check the fluids. Maybe I can just grease it and that sticky brake will quit sticking. Check the brakes. Nah, eh, probably not. So one thing that has to happen here is Duke had the ignition key changed to the old style key and the door is still, you know, the new style key, but he doesn't have the keychain. <laughs> and you know what that means? We gotta give him the keychain. So, should we give him the black Peterbilt? Or which way do I go? I guess I gotta go this way. Uh, let me let me fix this. Should I give him the black? There's only one king, Peterbilt baby. I'm kind of thinking maybe black because the cab overs have the red or don't kill Kenny. Well, no, I can't give him the don't kill Kenny because, you know, he's not a Kenny. He's a Petey. Um, or roll call. Roll call. Well, you know, technically a C13 right now, twin turbo. He's not really a roll caller. So I'm going with the black Peterbilt. There's only one king. And if you would like your own Peterbilt Mike T tag, um, shoppeterbiltmike.com. <laughs> you know, a little plug for my shop because. You know, it's not a great shop. It's not a big shop. I think it's a pretty great shop, but uh, um, let's just say I need all the help I can get because I checked my credit card balances this morning. <laughs> my truck credit card bill is, let's just say Andrea said that you better make some videos and quit buying parts for a bit. So what do you, I'll just, anyways, if we could buy a key tape, that'd be great. <laughs> oh, and uh, there we go. Much better. Much better. Can't have a truck without my Peterbilt key tag. Put that back in the old ignition fire maker. Fire make it happener. <laughs> now, one of the things that I've already done here, I didn't really record it because, you know, is it really that exciting? Not really. Well, it is. Yeah, it is. But let's turn the batteries on. Uh, boop. Now, it's really handy having a battery disconnect you know, I grew up, we called them night switches because um, you turn your batteries off at night. The one thing I don't like about one like this on Duke is it's out in the elements and, and around here with salt and that, it gets corroded. So on new trucks, I don't order them where they're outside of the box like that. But that shows how good Duke is because, because it's not all corroded up. But, now we got our batteries on, our lights work. If I put on load light one, oh no, that was marker lights. So I put on load light one, <laughs> I did a thing. It's something that a lot of us do, but <laughs> I put red LED bulbs in the load lights because, oh, because it's cool and it's red. Um, do that a lot. And you know what? The other thing I did, look at that. I put shiny chrome, backup lights on and I can hit that one <laughs> and I put LED bulbs in there too so this winter when it's dark because that's one thing about up here it's dark it's winter or when it's winter it's dark um it's great to have backup lights so I put some nice LEDs in there um the other cool thing with Duke is Duke actually has you see here we've got okay so this is this is headlights clearance lights load light one load light two load light three he has three load lights from the factory, which eh, can be whatever you want. Um, you know, generally backup lights or hooking up lights, but the other one hasn't even been used yet. So right here, I pulled it out of the frame here. You might've seen it, but this is, this is, <coughs> excuse me, this is load light three. And it, it's, <laughs> they give you a lot of extra at Peterbilt. Um, so this is load light three. So we could either mount more backup lights we could put a cab guard on and put more backup lights on, or we could do the smart thing and do underglow. <laughs> I know, right? Put uh, lights all in the frame because um, it's cool, you know, to have your truck glow. Um, and also, 
Uh, there is one more switch on the dash that was done afterwards um, and it's labeled work lights. And that is these ones. I just snipped them off, but they were on the cab guard. And uh, so technically I could use those for work lights or I could make those my underglow lights and leave this one for, which one? This one for backup lights. Um, but I don't know, we'll figure it out. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I got backup lights. Uh, I think it's really fun to put red lights in here. And I mean, if you're hooking up to a trailer, you can hook up with red lights versus white lights. And if you forget and leave your lights on, it's red, so it's okay. The other nice thing with these lights is um, in the wintertime around here, you know, when it's snowing and blowing, um, the snow all blows in on your tail lights. And the nice thing with having tail lights that are up high, um, or even higher than this, which is why like logging cab guards, they've got lights up high, is so you can see them in the snow because they don't get all blown in and covered with snow. Cause you know, you don't want to get run into in a blizzard. I know, I know, but it happens, it happens. So um, yeah, and the other thing I've got, I've got to put some more bolts back in the frame because like this cross member has, what does it have, seven, no six. Well, Technic, yeah, it's only got five, <laughs> five bolts. These two are, they're extras. Um, but yeah, so these two, those, that, that, yeah. And I got some extra holes here. So basically um, in this province and probably most places, you can't have a hole in your frame that doesn't have a bolt in it, even if it's not doing anything. I know, seems like a crazy rule, but it's true. So I bought a bunch of bolts, put that in, and I've got a chain hanger to bolt up as well. Um, haven't decided what I'm going to do for half fenders yet. I'd like to do maybe some full fenders, um, because I'll be bobtailing around a lot, but, uh, and I also want to paint the frame, um, sandblast it and paint it. Uh, that might have to wait a little bit just because of the old, um, <laughs> might have to let the old credit card cool off a little bit. Um, or I just do it myself. Mine just, don't. anyways, we'll figure that out. Um, so we got to do that. Need to figure out fenders so when the roads get yucky, I don't pelt the back of the truck. So I can either do half fenders, full fenders. I think I'd like to do full fender. I mean, half fenders are the norm, but I don't know. What do you think? What should I do? I don't know. Um, also, this is the wiring for the diesel fired, I think it's a Webasto engine heater. Let me have it on the floor here. Yep, there it is. Um, so I think I'm going to plug it in and see if it still works. Glenn, the former owner, I'm pretty sure he said it still worked. So, and I don't know what wire this is for. It looks like it got kind of smudged there, but, uh, but yeah, not that I want to put a diesel fired engine heater back here, although I could because my bunk heaters are there. Um, I just like to know if it works, but for now I'll probably tie up the lines and, and figure it out. Cause usually an engine heater. Usually you put it by the engine. So, but because this thing had hydraulics, um, you know, it was probably part of a fracking whatever thing, you know, it idled lots. And so they had that heater to keep the, the water warm for, to keep, you know, it, for whatever it was that they did. It's not like this was an over road long haul trucker truck, which is why it only had one air breather. I mean, it was kind of a simple truck. But we're gonna fix that because I've got the other air breather right there. <laughs> I just have to cut holes and drill holes, but um, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Mike, use the full. Being a little bit melodramatic. It's Peter Bell. There we go. Okay, now I've got this bracket uh, turned around, uh, tie strapped with the little plastic clip that it has there. I like the gentle, gentle uh, lay that it has. Um, tied the battery cables to here. Might, uh, might change that up in a little bit. I'll just see how it goes. Um, I also put a hose clamp on this water line and it, it gives me a nice gap there, plus it can't touch that pulley. So I think that'll be good for now. Um, also have one on this big um, reservoir return line to hold it up so it's not touching the frame. Last time they had a, 
a, uh, a hose covering it. It was just laying on the frame, which I, I didn't really like. So I like that better. And um, now this hose last time was run through the frame, but uh, it was a little tight. So I came through here. Now, the only thing is it gets kind of close to the exhaust manifold, but it does have this heat shield. So I put the heat shield on the other water line and this water line and uh, <coughs> and we'll keep an eye on it. See how it goes. Check my my hoses because the one thing when the engine you know starts to run and wiggle a little bit you know things will just kind of find their their groove if you know what I mean. I also put another uh, muffler clamp on here where I had that tape um, because there was a crack so I think that should do keep me from having to buy a new one. Um, put the clamp back on back here now this exhaust is quite rusty um, in fact there's some holes there I might try and fill those for now until I can figure out if I'm gonna try and put straight pipes on or for now just get new elbows for here but uh, oh my gosh look at how close they are to the fuel tank unreal but um, yeah not a lot of room that's actually the pickup for that uh, engine diesel fired heater but uh that's the one nice thing about straight pipes is it gives you way more room but if i do do a straight pipes i'm gonna have to try and get this exhaust to come out the frame there so i don't know i mean i guess it's doable but it's not gonna be easy but um yeah so anyways oh and I'm putting, <laughs> it's funny, I should have recorded more of taking this thing apart, but I was wondering where these clips go. And I remembered they go on here on the hood hinge. And he drops that one to hold this cable right on there like that. Then you just pull it around and just like that. Then it holds the wire on this loop so that when you close the hood, there's no, no muss, no fuss, no stress, but that actually needs to slide up. So I'm gonna pop that off and move it up a little bit more. Yeah, probably about there. Ah. There, same with this one. I don't know which one is, one side has holes and one side doesn't, but I think it's all the same. Oh yeah, it's always all the same. Make sure your wires have a nice lie, lay, good spot to sit, so to speak. It's probably a special tool for this, but use my brute strength. There. Ha. I just need a bumper. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I think I got this side of the engine tied up. I've got all the lines along here tied up. I've got these tied up. I put in a bracket here. Now this wire, that goes here, I think would normally be right by the engine. Um, but I had it coming out and I actually kind of like it out. Cause then if I got to pull the valve cover off to set things, I've got lots of room and this stuff's out of the way. Now this is a little bit wiggly over here, um, but I think I'm gonna get a bracket and just tie it off just to keep it from wiggling side to side. Um, got the wires tied up in there. I was gonna reroute this, line for the fan hub and have it come up here and go in there but it's a wire braid line that's a little hard and if i bend it it'll crack then it'll leak so i thought you know what for now we'll leave it like that so <clears throat> excuse me i've got to put the cover back on here it's uh this is it here but it's you can see the plastic's broken there's one bolt yeah, you know, there's one bolt in there that will, well, I think there was really only one bolt holding it on, but uh, I could probably use some washers and get that back on. So I'm gonna put that back on just to keep water and stuff from shooting in there since the front tire's here. I've also got to put the cross member back on. So I'll maybe do that next. Um, or maybe I'll do that little plastic cover. I don't know. Um, of course, we got the water lines there. I crawled underneath. I tied up all the heater hoses in the frame. Um, I've got the bracket here holding the heater hoses for the sleeper. 
I sleeved the heater hoses here where they touch the frame and um, I think that'll be fine for now. These are <laughs> the excess wires for that diesel fired engine heater. Um, I don't like it here, but being that the wires are all here, I'd like to try it first to see if this thing works before I disconnect all these wires. But um, yeah, so I think I'll probably just tie those up for now <sighs> so we can drive it. And yeah, then I can put some bolts in the frame. But first let's go back and put that plastic cover on uh, the electrical lines and um, what else did I say I was gonna do? Oh, right, cross member. Oh, and I tied up my plug. Now you can get, for this factory plug, you can get a new plug for that. So I think I'll do that just because that's so much nicer than a, a yellow plug. And I found a plug here for my, my um, clutch micro switch. So when I get it fired up, I'm gonna play with that and see if the clutch micro switch is gone. And maybe that's why my, uh, my Drake brake quit working. Fingers crossed. But, um, okay. yeah. that was easier than I thought it would be. Is it going to stay there? <laughs> I don't know. Ah. Oh, the guy's got to win once in a while, eh? Tell you, I am not feeling awesome today. Nope, I am not. Now this side, the hood mount is broken, but we'll put it in there. Anyways, anyways, I wanna say those are probably the other way. Oh well, let's go to the other side now. <laughs> oh. That's apparently this thing is like flexy. Well, sugar. Oh, so I got to pry that over. This, I know this little problem. Fix you. That's gotta go down. You dirty rat. Oh. <sighs> 
はい Put the hood down uh, and see how it lines up. Uh, and the answer is not very well. Oh, there we go. There we go. is how you align your hood. have it on a wonder if they have it straight or on a bit of a you don't want it to bang or at least I don't but what if I had it on just a bit of an angle yeah. I'm gonna try that that way it's you know Takes up the slack a little better, in my opinion. Ooh. There. Oops. See, now if I rock it side to side, it's not really loose, but yet it still goes up and down easy. So, uh, I like it. And I'll do the other side. But the other side, this part, hope you guys were able to see that. So yeah, the other side, this part broken, so I need to fix that. So it really doesn't matter where I put it on the other side. But um, yeah, it's on a slight angle so that I don't have a lot of side to side movement. I think it's better for your hood too. Now that's on, but you can see it's completely pooched up there. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna have to fix that hood. Um, put these on, use some washers, so that's better. And uh, oh, yeah, now I just have to grease it, but uh, you know what, I am, I'm pooped out. So I think we're gonna do that tomorrow. So see you in five or in the next frame. Well, it's day two. I'm back. <sighs> I gotta tell you guys, I'm a little tired. Um, didn't have a great sleep last night. Woke up coughing. And uh, Andrew's like, you should test for COVID. And I've been bugging her, like, because I tested negative, like, beginning of last week. I'm like, eh, if I got it, I got it, which I figured I already had it. So anyways, this morning I tested, and sure enough, it's positive. So I don't know. 
you know what they say go on vacation and the greatest gift you get is i don't know what i'm talking about anyways i'm running a little bit slow because i'm tired you know after yesterday i was just pooped out um it was minus four this morning which is i don't know so yeah minus four celsius is 24 degrees fahrenheit so it's getting cold and i need to cut wood but I have no energy to cut wood. Do I have energy to service Duke? <laughs> yeah, I do, because I want to drive him tomorrow. So that's what we're going to do. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, we got our electrical stuff tied up. I'm going to give it a little, but we're going to do it outside because I've learned from, well, actually I haven't learned from my mistakes, but I did get a little bit of overspray on stuff. Not really yellow, but let's just say I shouldn't have done that inside. So we're gonna take it outside to give it a little rebuild. Um, fire it up. But first I wanna service it, grease it and check the brakes. Some of you might say, Mike, didn't you already check the brakes? And then I would say, no. Because <laughs> when I drove it, it blew up. <laughs> uh, I think they're fine, though. You know, except for that one that's sticking. But I'll be able to see if it's a cam tube or a broken spring. I don't think it's a broken spring because I think it's just a dry cam tube from sitting. Because the previous owner didn't use it that much either. So, oh, and I really got to get another air breather mounted here. Because, sorry, Duke, but it looks a little hokey. You know, I'm a two air breather kind of guy. And if I had the money, and one day I will, I put 16 inches. Actually, they don't make 16 inches. <laughs> a 15 inch premium. Because Peterbilt makes a 15 inch stainless. And they, well, actually, okay. Okay, Peterbilt makes three 15 inch stainless air breathers. They make a 15 inch steel, which is made out of steel. It's a little bit shorter. And you can get those on three series and five series and all the series. Then they make a 15 inch stainless steel which is taller and it's all stainless but your your bolts for the cap are on the outside and then they make a 15 inch stainless steel premium where it's smooth and you actually have to push down turn your cap to get at the bolts on the inside so 15 inch premium one day baby <laughs> i'm sorry i just called you baby <laughs> got a little bit creepy there for a minute <laughs> unless there's a anyways doesn't matter um yeah maybe one day we'll Maybe we'll keep Duke forever and we'll push the fuel tank back, put some steps under the doors, big can straight stacks. Yeah. Or maybe I'll just buy a 379 because <laughs> you just never know what's going to happen in the future. I wanted a project truck one day, cab over, um, and now I have six. Well, technically I only have five cab overs and one conventional, but you know, if you put it out to the universe, it's going gonna, it's gonna to provide. <laughs> Might provide some debt to go with it though. <laughs> I don't really say that because Andrews remind me of all the money I've spent on uh, on Duke lately and she's like hey, you might want to just slow it down just put the brakes on put the brakes on slow it down tap the pedal so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna tap the pedal and I got lots I can do anyway so okay that was awkward let's get back to work or get to work because I haven't actually done anything this morning although I did have coffee and leftover pizza for breakfast because you know, when you're sick, just didn't feel like cooking. Well, actually, I never feel like cooking. I'm not a cooker. Andrea's the cooker. I'm the driver. I drive, she cooks. That's the deal. All righty. Let's give Duke some greasy. That's good. <laughs> I think I'll give these two rounds just because I don't know when the last time it was greased. Oh yeah, two is plenty. It's actually not bad at all. Yeah, you can already see it scooching out. Sounds like somebody's coming. 
Yep, I hear footsteps. Give that slack adjuster a little bit. Hi. Don't look at me in my lunch. <laughs> okay, don't look at her, guys. Okay, there's a die rod end here, thingy. Jingy mingy. That one got a little extra. Ugh. Doesn't look like the boots filled up yet. Cause this should be getting all fat. There we go, good enough. Three zingy dingies. Oh, hey, I should grease the drive. And when I say drive shaft, I mean, you know, steering shaft. We'll just give it one. Where's the, where's the fitting on this one? Oh, no, it's back there. Oh yeah, we can get her. Eh. Eh. I've actually got an old uh, hand washing towel to just wipe some of the excess grease off. You know, reuse a, a dirty cloth. I think with wiping the excess grease off, is then it's you're less likely to get it on yourself. Still gonna get it on yourself, but less likely. Oh. Careful not to get grease on you. Now, wasn't that grease gun like a bonus when you bought something else? Yes, I think it was my half inch drive impact. And I remember rolling my eyes at you at the time because you didn't have any touch to grease. And here we are. And here we are greasing trucks. Mm -hmm. Almost <laughs> like we know what we're doing. Okay, and then I'll get on a creeper to do those ones because I don't feel like laying on the ground yet. Come back here and do these ones. <coughs> Excuse me, cam tubes. I'm gonna give these cam tubes a little more, a little more loving because of uh, this brake sticking. So. Yeah, you see it's, there's some pressure there. out I should put a new grease fitting on here but I don't have grease fittings at the moment never a good sign when you're grease fitting pukes the grease back out I think we're out. No, nope, maybe not. It's a catch 22 because you don't want to put too much grease in and blow the seals out. Um, but like in the old days, that's how I know I had enough grease was when you'd hear it kind of crack a lacking as it pushed out. Ok, 
can hear that one crackling. There, so now get the creeper out, slide underneath and do the ones underneath. So we're out of grease. Bloop. So I got some uh, Petrocan Precision Synthetic All Season Grease because we get winter here and it gets chilly. Now, I don't know what the last grease I had in here because it was red. I think it might have been, I don't know what it was. I can't remember. <sighs> but this time we're using Petrocan. The air out here. Pushing the button in. I'm gonna call that messy. I think the stuff I was using before was Red Ram, actually. Probably shouldn't do that. It's probably how I broke the last one. Ah. Okay. Uh. that one too all right the creeper is a little too thick for me so I'm just gonna scurry in on my bottom and grease some new joints yeah just like that Check my diff vent, make sure it turns. Where's the, oh, there's the filler plug right there. Right on the side. Huh. It's quite high. Diff looks good though. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, now let's turn over. Uh, 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 uh. Grease these uh, schlack adjusters. On the <sighs> making a mess. <clears throat> okay, now to check the brakes. When I look in the sight hole, see if I can make it so you guys can see it. There is actually a lot of uh, a lot of lining there. You can see that that tapered edge there. That's when. Uh, that's when you would have to do brakes, so these are like brand new. So, let's uh, tighten them up. So, if I put this in here, that is way too much travel. Way too much. And as a rule, I like to do it up tight and then back it off a half uh, or a quarter. So I'm gonna do it up tight and back it off a quarter. Yeah, see that's good. I'll have to keep an eye on that slack adjuster and see if it's working. It's a problem if uh, they get gummed up and they don't ratchet. And to make them work, you have to make a full brake application. So like step on the pedal as hard as you can and uh, yeah, that's what makes them ratchet. This one's better. Check the lining, lots of lining. 
which is fantastic. You know, and generally a uh, automatic slack adjuster won't have be as tight as if you're using manual slack adjusters. But, um, but auto slacks are nice because they auto slack. There. Oh, that was easy. Now we just have to do the back. One thing I almost forgot to do is need to air it up to release the maxis so I can set the rear brakes and chalk the wheels. Now you can hear I got a couple of valves that are leaking a little bit, but uh, feels good. That one too, actually. Let's check our brake lining. A little hard to see that one. Looks pretty good. It does, it does. I think I'll just... Uh, Give them a little wrench action anyways. Oh yeah, this one wasn't good at all. I think this one was sticking and I backed it off. My bad. <laughs> oh. Okay, now back a half a turn or a quarter turn. It's like an eighth of a turn. Come on. You can see how the slack adjuster is coming out, but not the brake. Which leads me to believe either there could be a broken spring or this cam tube is just sticky from, you know, being dried up and not used. Um, where's the, where's the knut on this one? There it is. This one off a half. When I say half, I mean a quarter. <clears throat> and it's a bit stripped. So I need a different. Fricker. Need a different wrench. That was dripping a bit, so I'm gonna grab a three-quarter or something. Right here, there's this little driplet of oil. So this cover. I'm just gonna make sure these bolts are tight. <coughs> Excuse me. Should have grabbed a shorter, uh, <laughs> a shorter ratchet to get this out. Check the plug. Ooh, plug looks good. Check the oil level. It's down about uh, maybe half an inch. 
What's it look like? Oh, it looks good. It smells like gear oil. It's clean. It's clear. So that's perfect. And look at that. No, no, not even any fuzzies. So it's like brand new. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Temperature gauge is hooked up. I actually broke the temperature gauge off the transmission, so I'm gonna have to fix that one, but uh, you know, it happens. Eh. <laughs> and uh, now I'm just gonna check the tire pressures and, and it's good. You know what, it's, it's really good, quite pleased. And uh, then we can take it for a rip. Now these front tires don't look bad for weather checking and stuff. Um, right now that's at 92 and a half, which is okay. I'm, I'm not gonna air these right up hard um, because of their age. Um, it is getting into winter, so it's cooler. But uh, I think I'm gonna keep them I'm thinking 95. I don't think I'm gonna go to 100. Well, maybe I'll go to 100. I don't know. I just, uh, I'd like to uh, make sure they're not gonna separate and come apart. The nice thing is I don't really see any weather checking cracks like on the, the backside. So what's, what's this one? 90. Yeah, so that one's down a little bit. I might put them at 100. This one has a little bit of, a little bit more wear on the inside than the other one, but uh, uh, you know what? I think I'm just gonna do 95. Now I'll check the back tires. Yeah, it's about 85. Eh, about 83. <laughs> uh, I actually put a put a put a gauge on it and they were 85. I ended up I uh, I aired up the steer tires to 100 because I aired it up to 99. And I'm like, you know what, 95, 100, it's pretty dang close. Back tires, I'm gonna leave at 85 because they've got that one's a little low. That one's a little lower than this one, but um, but some of them, see that one looks not terrible. Uh, yeah, see we got some, some weather checking on some of them, especially the other side. So um, being that they're oldish, I'm gonna let them be a little low cause I don't want them to blow up, so. I don't end up pulling any trailers, so you know what? 80, 85, it's perfectly fine. Ugh, to rip to work. <sighs> Back and forth, because well, I don't have any airlines on it right now, because I took them off. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. The next project to make Duke Road worthy. We've greased them, we've tied up all our lines. I just have to check the rear diff when it goes out. I also have to fix the tail light on the back, so I gotta find a tail light. The wiring's there, but uh, kinda broke the tail light with the tractor. So I need to put a tail light on it, and uh, I need a bumper. Good thing, before I went on holidays, I ordered a bumper. <laughs> I got a bad feeling that the tow pin's gonna be wrong though, because I ordered it at work, and it was the one that it showed for a tow pin, but I think it was for a tow hook, not a tow pin, but, um, I'm gonna bring it in and irregardless we're using it because uh, I special ordered it. So that's right, you bought it. <laughs> okay, here's my bumper. I have to laugh. It says fragile handle with care and there's footprints on it. Meh. I guess fragile handle with care means walk all over it. <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna take my center toe pin off and um, yeah, hopefully it fits.
Well, let's see. I got the right bumper. came off the bumper, but where was that? That was oh that's still too short. But I'm gonna use some hard washers that are smaller, so we don't want a, a big intrusive washer. this guys I think you know I could almost I could almost make this work I don't know if I want to put that big ugly toe pin on take this bubble wrap off Just have to zing it up, zing it up, do, 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 zing it up. <sighs> Sorry about that. It happens. <sighs> so I put some five eighths bolts in there, and they go right through the three quarters. Um, and I think I'm going to take the piece off for the center toe pin right now because I'm not going to put it on. I uh, will probably put a hook on or even uh, make it so I can put like a clevis or something in there. Heaven forbid a guy needs to be towed one day. Ugh. I need an extension. Ex oh, dang it. And that's the wrong wrench. We just need a license plate. So, my idea, which I think, I think is a really good one actually. And in BC now, we don't have to have decals on our plates, which is a first, which is kind of weird. But then, how do you know when your insurance is up? I guess I gotta pay attention. <sighs> Anyways, um, I'm gonna change these bolts to stainless steel as well, but apparently I don't have any. But my plan, now this is my plan. I'm using a Peterbilt license plate frame. Huh? How about that? I'm set it like that. And then I'm gonna use an old license plate as like a giant washer on behind it. So let's do one at a time. And I'll put this one like that. Being careful not to scratch my shiny new bumper. <laughs> it's not just a bumper, it's a bumper. Very careful not 
because there we go. Don't scratch nothing. It won't scratch it. Right. Come down. Go in. Sometimes I even amaze myself. Look at that. <sighs> Apparently I have more than one nut. <laughs> Actually, I only have one nut. <clears throat> so what happens when you get testicular cancer in one of your nuts? They take one away, but that's okay. Because I, I still got one. So I haven't done a PSA for a while, but uh, check your nuts, guys. If you feel a lump, go get it checked out. Because I did once and uh, turned out to be cancerous. So if you're new to the channel, you didn't know that. If you're old to the channel, I talked about it once already, so. And fun fact, a uh, fellow in the UK, actually because of me telling him to check his nuts, went and did, uh, you know, was in the shower and just checked and found a lump. And I can't remember how it went, but uh, I think it was cancerous. So, you know what? You could save your life. And it's really, you know, who cares if, you know, someone's gotta touch your boys. <clears throat> Better that and be alive than not. So anyways, look at, you know, I, oh no, there's a, I was gonna say I could put another bolt in there, but there is a bracket there. So, um, but I'm gonna put a tow hook in here and, and I'm gonna get some stainless bolts for there, stainless bolts for here. I'm also gonna get some proper shims because those homemade ones that are on it, <coughs> excuse me, when I tightened them up, it pulled the top of the bumper in and you could see the crease and I don't like that. So I'm gonna get some proper spacers for in there and um, proper bolts for here. We'll get the proper hook. We'll put a little flipper here. So then if you, know, if you do get stuck and you need to pull, flip it up, hook your tow rope on or whatever and, and Bob's your uncle. So yeah, now, now I just need a tail light and to put the rear license plate on, so. Yeah, let's clean up this mess. We'll pull her outside and uh, and do that. Okay, fire in the hole. Whew. Let it do its clicky clacks. Yeah, that oil pressure come up. Beautiful. Air pressure still good enough. Pull her out. Oh, I know, a little low on air, but it's, there you go, yeah, just, yeah. There we go. Okay, so I was doing a little testing and here is the plug for the micro switch for the clutch. So I unplugged it and I put a jumper wire in and now the jakes work. So because of course your your clutch is to kick the the jakes off as well as for your cruise control. So so I need a new micro switch, but the good thing is with that jumper wire in there, I can use jakes now. So I'm gonna leave that in there. Um, Take it to work tomorrow so that's good found that now um gosh you know this truck is just coming right along um needs a good clean inside though i haven't cleaned the inside and boy she needs it nice thing is the gray doesn't show a lot but um but yeah let's take a look at this bumper now that it's outside oh <laughs> what a transformation Oh, I left the lights on. <laughs> yeah, that looks way better. Yep, yep. Tires don't even look, well, they still look a little too small for the fender wells, but uh, but she's coming together, guys. I just, oh, I got to put bolts in those frame too, because it is law right now. I have to carry snow tires or tire chains. So, well, and actually on a big truck, it 
I need to have tire chains. So I'm gonna have to throw some on. I put that chain hanger on there temporarily, so. Okay. And I'm not gonna waste any more time on it because these are not staying on here. <coughs> but the lights work, so. Except for the one that was broken. So we're just gonna, you know, kinda ease it in here. Doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be in there, right? It's like that. And then we'll just wrap a little tape around it. It's just, just a little hillbilly. What if it works? Is it really wrong? Park lights. Signal light. Look at that! It's like brand new! Whew. Perfect! Last bolt! Battery died in the in the sun. Apparently GoPros don't like the heat. I don't know. Or it was just anyways, whatever. Last last but not least. Oh, that looks better. No empty holes. They're all filled with bolts. Swap the mud flaps around to these other ones I have that are for an eight foot axle. Gotta wash that oil off because it was actually on uh, low and slow. So sorry, low and slow. I stole your mud flap, but we'll put another one back on there. And uh, I moved the chain hanger to here because this is an OEM Peterbilt chain hanger. So if you order it from the factory with chain hanger, that's what you get. A lot of guys up here don't like them um, because this kind of gets in the way, you know, and it's so we take a lot of them off and, you know, just put hooks or whatever. But for what I'm doing, it's good enough. We got chains, so we're legal beagle. I got bolts all in the holes, so we're all legal beagle. Now I just need fenders. So I don't know what I'm doing for fenders yet. Since I'm not going to be, well, I don't know what I'm doing with this truck yet. I don't, I mean, I want to get a step deck and then haul stuff with it. But, uh, so then with that respect, I'd like to get full fenders, but, um, maybe I'll just put half fenders for now. Maybe I'll put quarter fenders. I might even have quarter fenders kicking around here, but I'll have to go hunting. So, but for tomorrow, it's good enough. So, yeah. Oh, look at that. Sun's going down. Got the nice mud flaps. I mean, they're not stainless steel, but... Uh, oh, that's what I gotta do. Put all the bolts in, got the chain hanger on, got chains on it. I just have to tie, tie that stuff up so it doesn't go anywhere. Actually, you know what I could do? I could probably just go like this. Oh. Look at that. Problem solver. Good enough. Um, I'll maybe put a little tape on that fuel line, but uh, but yeah, it's good enough to try her out tomorrow. Take her to work. And look what I did. <laughs> oh yeah, a little rattle can restoration. Um, definitely looks way better. I also had some hub nut covers. Nut covers, I had nut covers is what I'm trying to say. So I put them on. And the problem with um, steel wheels, the regular center hub caps, they don't work because your aluminum hub sticks out. So the ones that go on there don't work. So we'll have to see what we're gonna do. And uh, yeah, looks way better. I do have a bit of a leak out here when the truck is shut off. So it's almost like pressure is coming back through. So there could be a check valve or something in the compressor, but um, Holds air pretty good, so that's good. Gave a little bath. <laughs> Give her a little bath. Andrea just got home. She went grocery shopping. She's been home all week and uh, running low on supplies is what we're saying here. But anyways, um, look at that. I really like that bumper. Now, 
The reason why I went with this bumper and not like a Texas bumper is, you know, we live in the north. We get snow, we get slush, we have curbs. Well, of course, everywhere has curbs, but, uh, but what I'm saying is if I end up working this truck, it'd be nice to uh, have a little grace if you get close to something big on the edges. And um, now this has got 22 fives and it's got the large spring front spring space. <laughs> Rewind, it's got the large front spring spacer blocks. So if I take those out, it would actually lower the front end. If I wanted to make this kind of like a pickup truck, truck or a low truck, it would lower right down. In which case, that's why I went with the 18 inch bumper too. Cause you know, if I put a 20 on, she'd be, she'd be touching the ground. But um, yeah. Oh, and here's a little trick. Um, if you've got plastic lights and, and even like the new style Peterbilt lights and they're kind of all scratched up from, from where, if you put um, rock guard on it, the clear Lexan, they shine again. So yeah, I don't know, it kind of fills in the cracks and I know I had a deco place or a rock guard trim line place do it. And I was like, wow, that was neat. And he said, you should do it to all of them. And I was like, well, I don't own the trucks, but um, anyways, <sighs> so that's it. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so put some tools in it and we're good to go. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. It's been a pleasure, much appreciated. I feel like crap. I'm uh, gonna go in and put my feet up and have a hot toddy. So, ah, that's it for Duke for today.